Hi, I'm Rick Wallum. Uh, today I'm going to be tying a soft tackle green drake. Um, some people will call it an emerger. Uh, soft tackle is sort of an emergent um, mayfly. Uh, as these, this is a crawler nymph, and crawlers, when they hatch, a lot of them will struggle to try to uh, undulate toward the surface, break out of their nymphal shuck and then complete their metamorphosis as an adult swimming to the surface, drying their wings uh, and flying off. Uh, speaking of drying wings, they're um, a gray day, a day that's sort of socked in and, and uh, socked in and, and drizzly can be very good for these hatches because the, the adult will ride on the water longer um, giving the opportunity for the fish to feed on. But that also will make, um, as the hatch is more abundant, you will get more cripples, more flies that are not quite fully metamorphosed on the surface and more vulnerable. And that's what I feel like this fly does. Um, I use a um, Daiichi 1760 hook. Uh, it is a nymph hook. Um, it is it has a rounded um, shank to it, so it gives a little look to movement. I tied this in a size 10 and 12. And the first thing I do before I put the hook in the vise, I will take a plier. And I used, to, I used to go across the hook like so and pinch the barb. And I broke, broke a lot of points off of hooks that way. Um, somebody pointed out to me one day going with the length of the hook shank and pinching down. And I've had much better success, success that way with pinching the barb and not breaking off the, the, barb, the barb itself but also giving a smooth um, hook shank or a hook point with no barb. I take my thread. First thing I'm going to do is run my thread through some tying wax before I attach it on. And I use the thread as a measurement tool. I'm going just in front of the halfway point, um, wrapping back toward the bend of the hook. I tend to stop my thread a little short of traditional, say where the barb would um, meet. On this particular hook, it's sort of a drop bend. So I'm stopping the thread just about where the um, hook point is. And I take um, some wood duck, uh, lemon wood duck. It's got some nice barring. It gives a very good impression like the natural. Uh, the tails on a green drake do have some variegation on them. And this wood duck does a very good job imitating that. I'm manipulating these barbules in my fingers to get them to lay the way I want, to get them even. And I'm going to tie that in shorter than the hook shank. Um, it's not critical on a nymph. It, it doesn't do any service to the fly to have them the length of the hook shank. Uh, it doesn't support the fly in any way. And again, I'm, I'm constantly manipulating the material and getting it to lay the way I want it uh, as I tie it in. Next step, I'm going to take a little bit of olive zelon. Um, zelon comes in long hanks and it's a uh, uh, I guess it's a it's a synthetic. I'm not sure if it's a nylon or what have you, um, but it 
it comes in long strands, and I have been putting it in these little pill bottles, and I find it a really good way to um, keep it from fraying and getting caught up with hooks and other materials. So uh, I'm using an olive straight Zelon. And again, I'm kind of preening this material and plucking it out and getting the fibers to do what I want it to do before I tie it into the, into the fly. Little pinch wrap, I pull straight down. That locks, and I do that two or three times. And that locks the material right on top of the hook shank and positions it where I want it to go. And this is a shuck, but I'm gonna tie it very short. And all I'm looking for with this material is just to get a little bit of a sheen at the tail end of the fly. I'll measure that out where I first tied the thread in. I'm going to make my cut and that material, um, I manipulate the thread as I lay it forward and it lays it on top of the hook shank. And again, it's a measurement. I want that abdomen to have a certain amount of bulk. And if I want it even, I'm going to measure it to where I tied in the fly, and that's about where the abdomen is going to end. So I have a nice even underbody to lay in the next piece of material that I'm going to tie in. Again, using my fingers, I'm manipulating that material to get it to lay exactly how I want it. Next, I'm going to tie in um, some olive gray um, goose biot. And I'm looking for a barbule. There's a natural curvature to this material. And I want, when I tie it in, I want it to lay away from me, away from the hook. And tied it in by the tip. I'm pulling off an individual strand. And I'm looking for a notch right at the bottom of the hook. And if the curvature is going away from me and that notch is on the bottom, I know I'm going to expose um, a raised rib. And that's what I'm looking for. Now on this particular fly, a couple of things. Um, in certain watersheds, there's a, a brown hue to this as well. And to strengthen the fly, and I'm not going to do it today, but I can, I can either use a brown wire or I can use a brown thread, a thicker brown thread as a rib and that'll you know, give me a little more um, durability on this uh, barbule. First thing I'm going to do when I start to use this, I'm wrapping my thread forward to where I'm going to tie it off. I take a, a finger and push that material forward, that biot forward, and then come up and over the top of the hook shank, bring it back over one wrap, and then I trap it under the um, hook point, and that holds it into place so I can reach in, grab it with a hackle plier, and make my first wrap. And I'm just spiraling this up the, the body and creating a ribbing effect to the tie-off point. Now on these larger flies, these goose biots are fairly short. I'm going to use a little bit more dubbing and a little bit more body thorax. Um, but that'll give me what I'm looking for. I'm wrapping several times behind and over, and I'll make two or three wraps in front of, and then I reach in with my index finger, push the thread out of the way, and make my trim. That way I'm not going to cut my, my thread. Again, going back to the preening, get everything in shape, make a few more wraps. And I'm going to wrap forward to where I'm going to tie in the hackle. And just kind of keep going back and forth over that to build up a little bit of a 
a little bit of bulk. Uh, next thing I'm going to take is I use some beaver dubbing and this is a gray olive and it's matching the body color depending on the stream the stream you're fishing the substrate of the stream these um, mayflies will take on the characteristic color of, of the stream bed so one color is not going to happen in every stream that you fish so you might have to have two or three colors it's good to know your local waters taking time looking at some of these insects up close I usually with my iPhone will take a photograph of them and really try to get the accurate color and then go home and match that color when I'm tying the fly um, and this beaver dubbing is a little more gray than olive so it's a little lighter hue and that's my local waters that's the color of the natural that I'm fishing and I sp spin on a noodle of dubbing and I can always add more I want to get a nice fine noodle of dubbing I push it up to where the thread attaches to the hook wind my thread back up so I shorten that thread so I have really good precise control on where I put that dubbing wrapping the dubbing and occasionally stopping and tightening that dubbing up by a couple of twists again and getting the body that I want this has got a this is a fairly um, beefy fly if you will so I'm going to give myself enough thorax to imitate that and again I'm, I'm kind of pushing that material in place making a couple of um, wraps in front to sort of dam it up and, and lock it into place again I might take my dubbing wax or, or thread wax and apply to the thread. Uh, next I'm going to take a hen neck uh, which is a little softer fibered uh, material it's not great for dry flies but it, it's nice and soft and wispy when it's in the water. I'll somewhat measure that material strip the base sort of sweep back the fibers to get a sort of an accurate measurement of how long I want that I snip the tip of the hackle and then come right alongside the quill and cut as close to the quill as possible to give myself a good base I'm going to go a, a little, little more past on one side so my first wrap against the hook shank it'll lock that into place make a couple of wraps forward fold that tip of that feather back make one or two wraps over the top and then go ahead and cut that fiber and what it does is that locks that feather in and it it really makes it secure I make my first wrap I will sweep and preen back these barbules attach my hackle plier and just continue with my left hand uh, as a right-handed tire sweeping those fibers back on each successive wrap now I've measured where I'm I'm going to make three wraps with this material I'm stripping the 
Hackle fibers back and that exposes that quill and I just wrap until that quill lays up against the, the hook shank. And that way I'm not trapping any barbules and making a, a messy head. Again, I'll wrap forward, a couple wraps back reach in with my scissors and snip that. Preen the feather to get it to lay the way I want it. Now I could stop this fly right here, um, but I want to sell this fly in the fly shop, so I'm going to dude it up a little bit. I'm going to put a little extra in it. I take a second um, feather, the first one being a dun color. This one happens to be a speckled olive and it's called a Brahma and just gives me a little bit um, more variegation say the legs and what have you and it just gives the fly a little bit extra to it gives it a little better look I'm sweeping those barbules back looking for a certain length Toward the tip of the feather, they're a little shorter. Toward the base of the feather, they're a little longer. I'm just looking for that happy medium. Again, trimming the feather so I have a something to grip as I tie it in. Make my first wrap, two wraps over the top, sweeping back, trapping the rest of that feather. It's such a small amount, I don't have to trim it. Again, I make my first wrap, sweeping those fibers back. Reaching in with my hackle pliers, positioning that feather, sweeping those barbules back, keeping them out of the way for when I wrap the head. Reach in, I pull those extra barbules off that I'm not going to need. Get the feather exactly where I want it. Make my final wraps. Trap the quill. Come pull the quill back. Wrap over the top. Reach in. And that makes a really clean head. Notice how there's no hackle fibers sticking out over the front of the eye. I don't have to worry about that getting clogging the eye of the fly when I I'll push against the eye, pull down on the thread, give it a one last little pull to give it a good seat. And that's the completed Green Drake soft tackle. Again, I omitted the, um, the brown. I, I've been using brown pure salt thread, uh, which is no longer on the market, but a nice silk thread to wrap through those uh, ribs on the, on the goose biot, and it gives a real nice effect. Again, using a, a head cement, I use this Trout Hunter. Uh, it's a water-based cement. It's very, very thin and it absorbs into that thread very well and gives a nice strong completion to the fly. And that's a, ground, a brown drake soft tackle. I mean, I'm sorry, a green drake soft tackle.